Hello and welcome into another episode of Locked on Wolves. Today on the show, it's the post-game podcast from the Timberwolves' thrilling win over the Boston Celtics in overtime. The second time in less than a week the Timberwolves have beaten a previously undefeated team. And this one was a ton of fun. Anthony Edwards came through as the hero. We'll break down the whole thing on the show here tonight. Welcome in. You are Locked on Wolves. You are Locked on Timberwolves. Your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Wolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Locked On Wolves. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Happy Tuesday, everybody. And it is a victory Tuesday for the second time in less than a week. The Timberwolves beat one of the, uh, I guess, at this point, the final remaining undefeated team in the NBA. But two of the best, probably three or four teams in the entire league without question. The Wolves beat the Boston Celtics on Monday night in overtime. We're going to break it all down. This is the postgame podcast. First of all, though, here off the top, a big thank you for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms, wherever you like to listen to podcasts, you can find Locked On Wolves. You can also watch on the Locked On Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV, and you can follow on X at Locked On T-Wolves and also at B Beacon with two Bs, two E's, C-K-E-N. Hopefully you listen to the post game, excuse me, the live postcast that Luke Inman did uh, it was with Jack Borman this time around. Sometimes it's with Jack. Sometimes it's with Tyler Metcalf, both from Canis Hoopus. And uh, on the audio feed here, if you're listening, wherever you listen to audio podcasts, you can find uh, the postcast is the episode before this one. Uh, if you're looking for the video on YouTube, it's over at Lockdown Sports Minnesota. They do it live after each and every Wolves game. Occasionally catch me over there hosting, but typically it's hosted by Luke Inman. So go check that out if you have Check that out if you haven't listened to it yet. Um, but anyway, today, the post game pod, I'm going to go through my key takeaways from the game. And this was a fantastic, impressive victory by the Timberwolves. The last remaining team, excuse me, the last remaining undefeated team in the league was the Boston Celtics. Came to this game with the league's best point differential. Uh, the league's best offense. Of course, the Wolves had the best defense, at least according to defensive rating. All the defensive efficiency numbers had the Wolves pegged as the best defense in the league. And the Wolves came out on top in this one. And for me, the biggest thing is that this was kind of a study in just how good the Wolves can be this year and realistically how high their floor is. And and that's where I want to start. So typically in the postgame pod, I'll do like a game flow or and or my biggest takeaways, and then we'll get into individual studs and duds. I want to start with my number one biggest takeaway, and that is that the floor of this team is so high because there were so many reasons that the Wolves should have lost this game against arguably the best team in the league, who I think will end up being the best regular season team in the entire league in the Boston Celtics. And, you know, obviously the Celtics didn't have their best game, right? Like we can say that um, flat out, Straight away, we know that, right? Still, the Timberwolves played not all that well in a lot of facets, but yet they still eke this game out in overtime. And, and what I mean by that is, it, it, when I say that the Wolves have a high floor, think about it this way. Carl Anthony Towns fouled out in just 28 minutes, easily his worst game of the season, made just three field goals, had seven points and seven turnovers, and six fouls disqualified from this game because of the six fouls. Uh, Rudy Gobert shot two of 11 from the free throw line. The Timberwolves turned the ball over 23 times. We're a minus seven in the turnover category. The Timberwolves shot just 52% from the free throw line as a team. Of course, that's because of Gobert's two of 11, but 52% from the line as a team. 
They were even in the rebound category, and they only made two more threes than the Boston Celtics, but they won by five in overtime. Given all of those stats, and especially the cat thing and the Rudy struggling so much at the free throw line, when the defense is as good as it was in this game and as, as it has been the, for the vast majority of the first six games of the season for the Wolves, when the defense is this good and you can count on getting a dominant performance from a star like, say, Anthony Edwards, and you get a couple of key moments from some role players, some ancillary pieces, we'll get to that here in a little bit. But in this game, namely Mike Conley, Jaden McDaniels, the floor of this team is so high. I mean, they turned it over 23 times against the team with the best offense in the league coming in. Their best or second best player, depending on how you view Carl Anthony Towns, scored seven points, turned it over seven times and fouled out in 28 minutes. And yet they still won this game in overtime. The margin for error becomes much wider when you have a, a high, 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 high end talent like an Anthony Edwards. And the the bar is so high for the defense as well. Defense plus a an absolute superstar on the offensive end of the floor means that your floor is extremely high. And obviously, so is your ceiling, right? This team is a high floor, high ceiling team. And I know we're six games in, but this is exhibit A. Well, actually, Wednesday against Denver was exhibit A. This this is exhibit B, right? Um the Timberwolves have now shown twice, and I know it's the regular season, and I know it's Denver and Boston, not like, I get it. It's November, the first week in November, right? But this is, what, what, like, you have to win the games that are in front of you, right? So I don't think we can take anything away from the Wolves for this, right? I, I don't think it's fair to approach it from from that direction. So we have to give credit where credit is due, and that is a a stellar defensive team turning in a good enough offensive performance keyed by an absolute superstar offensively in Anthony Edwards, or really a two-way star. And that's a serious, that's, that's a meaningful win. I, you know, I, I don't want to get into the whole, like, Oh, it's a statement to the league. Like, cause it's game six, right? We know that we're less than 10% of the way through the season. But even if it's too early to make a proclamation like that, it's not too early to say this is a high floor, high ceiling team for all the reasons I've already listed. And I, I want to spend most of the show today going through a few individual examples in terms of individual players, but then also key moments in this game. And my key takeaways based on the Wolves, um, what the Wolves performance looked like against a really good Celtics team. Um, I mean, I think Boston's going to be the best team in the league this year record wise. Jason Tatum still had 32 points on 22 shots. Like that, it wasn't a shot. It wasn't a bad game for Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown had twenty six, seven, and four. Like this was just a a strong all around performance from Anthony Edwards and a very strong defensive performance by the Wolves. And I actually want to start there. I want to talk defense. I want to talk Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert. Actually, Rudy Gobert, and Jane McDaniel's both fit into the defense conversation. I want to talk a little bit more Mike Conley on the offensive side. I know he only only had eight points, but his fingerprints were on this one. I want to talk about all that here. We'll get to individual studs and duds here a little bit later, um, and that's what we'll do here on the show today. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our title sponsors over at FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet at FanDuel. You can score early this NFL and NBA season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Again, that's new customers get $150 in bonus bets. All you have to do is place a winning $5 money line bet. If your team wins, you get that $150. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than right now. The app is extremely easy to use, and this is a perfect time. We are midway through the football season, a little past midway for college, but right at, about at midway for the NFL. Of course, we've also got NHL underway. You've got college basketball kicking off this week. The uh, Minnesota Golden Gophers had their first like actual real game on uh, last night on um, on Monday night. 
and you've got uh, obviously baseball is over, but between college basketball, college football, football, and the NBA and the NHL, there's plenty to bet on over at FanDuel. Again, the app is extremely easy to use. You can bet on spreads, player props, over unders, and more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL and NBA and NHL seasons. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. A big thank you once again for making Locked on Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, every day or tomorrow on the show, we're going to break down further what the Wolves have been so impressive at doing over this little mini win streak the Wolves have going on. They're, by the way, they're 4-0 at home. We'll talk about that too. We'll also preview the next matchup Wednesday night. The Wolves have another game. It's the Pelicans on Wednesday night uh, as they close out this this lengthy homestand that's now spanned over it ultimately span. A little over a week. So we'll break that down on Wednesday. We'll take a peek at the upcoming schedule. That's all upcoming. A big thank you again for making this show your first listen each and every day. All right. Um, so talked a lot about the defense already. And I want to oh, talk a little bit more about it because it's been that impressive. Coming into the game against the Celtics, the Timberwolves had the number one defensive rating in the entire league. And it's for a lot of reasons. But Boston had the number one offensive rating coming into the game. The Timberwolves held Boston to 39%, 39.1% shooting from the field. Just 11 made three-pointers in this game. Boston was 11 of 39. That's 28.2% from outside the arc. The Wolves also forced Boston into committing 18 turnovers in this game. Boston came into the game eighth in overall turnover rate offensively, 12.2%. In terms of offensive turnover rate, Boston was only averaging 14 turnovers per game on the season, and the Timberwolves forced Boston to commit 16 turnovers, albeit in an overtime game, but still 16 turnovers, uh, or excuse me, 18 turnovers against um, against the Timberwolves. So they came into the game averaging 14 turnovers, which was the ninth best mark in the league. They turned it over 18 times against the Wolves. Wolves. They shot just 39% from the field and 28% from three against the Timberwolves' number one ranked defense. I'd be surprised if the Wolves would not still be number one after this game. I'm sure that they will once the stats all update. The Wolves have been legitimately fantastic defensively, and they've done it in a variety of different ways, and that's something we'll talk about further as we get throughout the week here. But in this game, Rudy Gobert contests at the rim. He only had one block in this game. But ladies and gentlemen, Rudy Gobert looks like defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert. He does. And we could talk about the two of 11 at the free throw line. It doesn't not matter. But I mean, just a quick perusing of X. The artist formerly known as Twitter tells me that people are way too caught up in him shooting two of 11 in free throws on free throws in one game. Guys, it's one game. He's not going to shoot 18% on free throws for the season. <laughs> like, like it's not great, but I mean, who hasn't shot, had a bad shooting game, right? Rudy Gobert was six of six from the floor, grabbed 12 rebounds and altered countless shots that the Boston Celtics took was a team high plus 24. And yes, single game individual player plus minus is very noisy and I don't like it. But when it's that good in a five point game, if you're a plus 24 and you missed nine free throws, you did something right. And Rudy Gobert continues to do a lot of things right. 2 of 11 at the free throw line. Yeah, it's gross. But, I mean, so is Kyle Anderson, 1 of 6 from the field. So is Carl Anthony Towns, 3 of 10 from the field. So is, uh, you know, any number. Like, we can cherry pick and just talk about bad shooting games all day long. But when you're that good defensively and you do everything else right, you get yourself a lot of leeway, right? Right. Last year's Rudy Gobert, maybe not so much, right? It, he wasn't, he was good defensively, but he wasn't the impact defensive player that we've seen through six games so far this season. The same impact Rudy Gobert that the Utah Jazz saw for several seasons, a multi time defensive player of the year award winner, an all NBA player, a multi time all star. That is the version of Rudy Gobert that Timberwolves fans are watching so far this season. 14 and 12 for Rudy, six of six from the floor, two of 11 at the line. Only the one block, but I tell you, he altered so many shots at the rim. I mean, even just watch overtime, like just watch overtime. 
And the four A's to the rim by the Boston Celtics that were shut down by Rudy Gobert were numerous. Rudy was just there walling up and guys could not score against him. It was a near perfect Rudy Gobert performance, at least on the defensive end of the floor. And again, the six of six from the field, that matters, right? Like, so does the two of 11 from the free throw line. But I mean, you have to look at the whole body of work in this game for Rudy Gobert. And it was so good. The technique he displays defensively, the fact that he emerged from this game, um, like he only committed four fouls in 41 minutes across regulation and overtime. And was is so good at being vertical. He's never really had foul trouble. And I think Wolves fans are just kind of used to watching Carl Anthony Towns and Jaden McDaniels um, struggle through foul trouble. Rudy Gobert, for as good as he is defensively, has never been somebody who picks up a ton of fouls. And this was a, a clinic in that. With guys who love to attack the rim, and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, Rudy Gobert shut them down at the rim consistently in this game. Al Horford had three points and five rebounds in this game. Chris Epps Porzingis, yeah, he scored 20 points. He was 5 of 14 from the field. He had 20 points on 14 shots. Rudy Gobert had 14 points on six shots. Which would you rather have, right? It's it, it's a bit of a false choice. Who cares, right? My point is, it kind of cancels out. Like, you look at Chris Epps' line, you go, ah, 20 points. Great game for Chris Stapps, Porzingis. You look at Rudy's line and you say 14 and he missed nine free throws. Well, guess what? He was also a perfect six of six from the field and dominated defensively. Um, the point is, don't get caught up on the two of 11 free throws. Rudy Gobert was so, so good in this game. So good. And the Timberwolves defense was so good. The length of the Wolves, and I've talked about this a lot on the show. If you have Mike Conley just being a pest out top, up, up top, and you have the, and also Carl Anthony Towns when they're playing at the level on screen and rolls, like similar to what they did a couple of years ago with Jared Vanderbilt and Patrick Beverly, maybe not quite as aggressive. They're not, they're not like fully blitzing all pick and rolls, but they're playing at the level a lot more. And when Cat's in pick and roll, he's not dropping. So if you have Cat and or Conley being aggressive and you have Jaden McDaniels and Anthony Edwards and their length and their defensive intuitiveness and skill level athleticism, you know, wanting to pick off that pass to deflect that pass and, and get going the other way to get some easy offense. You have their length on the, on the wings and in jumping passing lanes. And then you have Rudy Gobert roaming the back line, ready to block shots in the paint. That's a tough defense to, to deal with. The number one offense in the league came into target center, got shut down to the tune of 39% shooting from the field, 28% outside the arc and 16 turnovers and got beat by this Timberwolves defense. The length, the athleticism, and, and dare I say the desire, which is not something we said very often last year. This team did not look like they wanted to dominate last year. They did, like at times it just it was questionable what the dedication level was to loose balls, 50-50 balls, defensive rebounding. And if I'm not mistaken, the Wolves have been even or or plus in rebounds in every game this season. They might have had one game they were a minus two or something like that. But they've been basically equal or better every game this year. We did not see that ever last year, the last two years. And that, to me, is a really good barometer for effort level, at least on defense. And I'm not saying last year's team didn't want to win. Like, it's not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that this team really seems to have bought into having a defensive identity and an offense that can beat you in multiple ways. And if nothing's working, we'll give it to Ant, and there's a pretty good chance he can figure it out. And you might get a game like the opener against Toronto where the ball's sticky and Ant can't score and you lose 97-94, right? But if all things are equal, your floor is very high, as I said in the first segment, if you have the ability to go out and just score, which Anthony Edwards does. And that's a luxury to fall back on. It's not sustainable every night. It's not sustainable for a seven-game series in the playoffs. But it can help you when you're having a bad offensive night. If your defense is on point, if your defense doesn't take a night off. And, and if Ant has a night off, like that, that's, that, that's the other point I was making is you have multiple ways 
to, to beat another team. I mean, Jaden McDaniels had 20 points in this game. He was the second leading scorer for the Wolves. The Celtics were daring him to shoot. I haven't really talked about this, but the Celtics had Drew Holiday guarding Carl Anthony Towns, and it worked for basically the whole game, other than I think it was a third quarter flurry from Cat where he scored two, three times in a row um, on drives to the hoop. He had one overturned, called an offensive foul. Yeah, fine. He hooks too much. I get it. I still think, by the way, now's not the time for the soapbox moment. Cat had zero free throw attempts in this game. No, he did not play well. And we'll talk about that in Suns and Duds. But good heavens. It's so not fair that Carl Anthony Towns does not. The prejudice of NBA officials, and I, I don't use that word super lightly. Like I feel like there is a prejudice against Carl Anthony Towns because of the way he's behaved. And and yeah, he's got to clean up the way he complains to officials. But man, um, he needs a whistle. And he had zero free throw attempts on uh, on 10 field goal. Now, seven of his 10 field goal attempts were threes in this game. The Celtics were using Drew Holiday to, to guard him. And ultimately, the Wolves won the game, so it didn't matter. Um, but they also, they basically were saying, hey, let's load up on Anthony Edwards. Let's make Cat beat a smaller, obviously, top flight defender in Drew Holiday. Let's make Cat beat him. And if if he posts, we can double if we want to. If he's on the perimeter, we'll take our chances with Drew Holiday guarding him. And let's make Jaden McDaniels beat us in single coverage. And it took Jaden McDaniels 18 shots to get 20 points. He's not a super efficient score. He had zero free throw attempts. But that was the Celtics game plan. And it actually, it almost worked. It's, it's actually kind of funny because it feels kind of gimmicky for a team that was undefeated coming into the game. But it almost worked for them. Instead, the Timberwolves ultimately won this thing because of Anthony Edwards' brilliance. And I want to talk a little bit more about that. We'll do individual studs and duds, and that's how we'll close out the show here today. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is also brought to us by our friends over at Jace Medical. If you're not familiar with Jace Medical, you need to get familiar with the Jace case. The Jace case is a fantastic tool from Jace Medical that can help you be prepared for any situation. We spend a lot of time talking here on the show. You and I, we get fired up together on wins and losses for the Timberwolves who starts and who sits. I'm thankful for the connection that we have. And today, I want this chat to be a little bit more personal thanks to Jace Medical. I just learned that you can get a one-year supply on ED medications. You realize what that means Bring on extended travel, bring on the next natural disaster or supply chain issue. You are covered, my friend. You don't have to worry about whether or not you can refill your generics for Cialis, Viagra, or Rivadio prescription. And this is possible because of our friends at Jace Medical. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use the promo code LOCKDOWN at checkout for a discount as well. A verified customer had this to say about Jace. Quote, I am thankful for the service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half to have it. I ordered most of my daily meds with a year supply. I also ordered antibiotic kits. I feel secure now. Prices are lower than local pharmacies. I highly recommend this for everyone. If you or someone you love would get some peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember to use the promo code locked on and you'll get $20 off your purchase. All right, let's close this thing out by talking about Anthony Edwards. I've gone over 20 minutes without talking about just how fantastic he was down the stretch in this in this game. Um, obviously, if you didn't watch the game, the line speaks for itself. 38 points on 25 shots, nine boards, seven assists in this game, was a plus 18, the second best mark on the team. Um, he was great, but he really sh he really shined in those moments where the Wolves offense was stagnant. And at times it's 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 his own fault for it being stagnant because he he you know goes into hero mode sometimes. But in overtime, he was so good. The first shot he made in his flurry was a really impressive shot. And then he comes down the next time down the floor, he hits a three-pointer from the right wing to push the lead, I think, to five at that time. And then he hit another shot. Um, I think that one was the spinner in the paint, the the right-handed kind of you know, spin. I guess he was on the left side, he spun left shoulder and hit a tough floater in the middle of the paint three consecutive possessions that he scored on 
to really salt this game away for the Wolves. And, and it was tied right when he started his play. The Celtics actually scored the first bucket of overtime and had a brief lead. And then Ant came down and just went to work. And and that goes back to the floor I was talking about earlier. Um, Like nobody else in this team had an impressive offensive game. Like Rudy had 14 on six shots, but he really struggled at the free throw line, right? Um, Carl Anthony Towns, not a good game overall. Mike Conley, I didn't talk about him much earlier. I meant to, but he hit, he only made three shots. I think all three of them were like in big moments. He hit that three pointer in the third quarter when the Celtics were making a push and he finished with eight points on five shots, three of five shooting, two of three outside the arc, three assists and no turnovers for Mike Conley. He was a minus 18. This is another example of individual plus minus being misleading. You say, oh, Conley played 36 minutes, was a minus 18. He must have had a bad game. Eight points, three assists. No, Mike Conley was great. This is a really good Mike Conley game. So um, back to the point about Ant. It was fantastic on both ends of the floor. He rose to the challenge guarding Jason Tatum. Rudy Gobert talked about this post game, uh, talked about how, you know, Ant's shot making was great. But what's most impressive is his ability to guard and his his want to essentially to guard star players. And we know that, right? We know that Anthony Edwards rises to the challenge. He wants to guard the Jason Tatums. He wants to guard the star players. Um, going back to guarding John Rant in the playoffs in, in 2022, March of 20, March, nope. April, May of 2022, a year and a half ago. Ant wants that assignment. It's it's the it's the lower tier assignments that he's you know struggles with sometimes because he's not as locked in. But if you tell him, hey, go guard this all star, I mean, he's going to lock him down. And Jason Tatum didn't get locked down to be to be clear. But late in the game, he kind of did. Um, he, I mean, the Wolves defense was really good, and Anthony Edwards is part of that. I gave a lot of props to Rudy Gobert earlier, but Anthony Edwards, Jade McDaniels, their length really bothered the Celtics. Tatum had six turnovers in this game. In fact, Tatum, Tatum Holiday, and Brown combined for 12 turnovers and uh, they and just 12 assists. 12 assists, 12 turnovers between the three of them. Tatum himself had six turnovers to just two assists in this game. Credit Anthony Edwards for a fantastic individual defensive performance. And we could start our studs and duds there. Anthony Edwards was fantastic on both ends of the floor in this game. Is absolutely was the best player on the floor. 38 points on 15 and 25 shooting, two of eight outside the arc, six of seven at the line, nine rebounds, seven assists, one steal, just the three turnovers in 38 minutes. And by the way, he played with five fouls for like the last for overtime, overtime, the vast majority of the fourth quarter. I think he picked up his fifth foul early in the fourth quarter. A couple of ticky tack fouls in there. And really impressive for Ant to play as tight as he did defensively and as ag aggressively as he did down the stretch and not foul out of this game. It was really, really impressive. Um, and, and, and we can't not note how important that was. So a, a well-rounded performance from Anthony Edwards, a true superstar performance, a two-way performance from Anthony Edwards. Rudy Gobert is my second stud. He was great. 14 points, 12 rebounds, six of six shooting. I know he was two of 11 on the line. We talked about this already. Uh, I don't care. He was a stud. One assist, one block, a couple of turnovers was a game high plus 24 in the individual plus minus column. My third stud in this game is going to be Nas Reed. I haven't talked about Nas at all yet. But he was really good, especially with Carl Anthony Towns in foul trouble and ultimately fouling out in this game. Nas had 14 points and nine shots, was big in the first half. Uh, the Wolves were down three at halftime. And Nas Reed was a primary reason for why they were still in this thing. 14 points, four rebounds, two assists, two steals, two blocks. A really well-rounded line. We don't always see that from Nas, but he did a little bit of everything in this game. Five and nine from the field, two of four outside the arc. In this game, um, honorable mention to Mike Conley. I know the line isn't sexy. It doesn't stand out. Eight points, three assists, three of five shooting, a couple of steals. But Mike Conley was very good. Also, Kyle Anderson had six assists in this game. Five rebounds in 25 minutes. Didn't shoot it well, but did a few other things well. An interesting note related to the rotation. The Wolves had eight players that played 20 or more minutes. In the first half, Shake Milton played three minutes and did what Shake Milton has done so far in a Wolves uniform, which was very... He, not much. <laughs> he was very quiet. He, In fact, he didn't register register a single box score statistic in those three minutes. 
In the second half, we saw Jordan McLaughlin get his minutes at, I think it was the end of the third quarter. Um, But, I mean, McLaughlin played four minutes, Shake Milton played three. And then Nas, Kyle Anderson, and Nikki Alexander-Walker all played 20 or more minutes off the bench. And that was it. It was essentially an eight-man rotation with a, a handful of minutes for that ninth guy in the first and second half, uh, respectively. Nikki Alexander-Walker, by the way, was also very good. In fact, I, I mean, I'm just giving, like, Shout outs and honorable mentions left and right, but really everybody that saw the floor, um, except for Carl Anthony Towns, who we'll get to in a minute, I would I would say played extremely well in this game for the Wolves, and also except for Shake Milton. But like Kyle Anderson had good moments. Nas Reed was very important. Nick Alexander Walker hit a couple of big shots at eight points on six shots. I thought he played very well off the bench. Um, I, like just a an impressive performance from some of these guys in a really big game. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns for me is my only dud and, and yeah, he had 10 boards and, and he had some good moments, especially in the third quarter, but seven turnovers and fouling out one of seven outside the arc cats got to figure out the, the three point shot. We're six games in. So I'm not, you know, it's similar to the two of 11 from Rudy. Like, you know, Rudy's not, I don't know. He's not Steph Curry from the free throw line, right? Like we know that he's also not going to shoot two of 11 probably ever again this season, right? Let's not overreact to that. Cat's not probably going to shoot one of seven too often from outside the arc. Yeah, the three-point percentage isn't good through six games. It's going to improve, right? Let's not overreact to these individual shooting lines. It, it, the, it's a painfully small sample. Cat's going to be okay. This just wasn't his best performance. It was easily the most out of control he's been in terms of uh, the offensive fouls, like the seven turnovers, six personal fouls. I don't remember how many of the six fouls were offensive at least two, if not three. And remember, he's led the league in offensive foul percentage in terms of what I mean by that is the percentage of his fouls that are offensive in nature uh, led the league the last couple of years. This was the first game where that was really an issue for him. Seven turnovers, fouls out in 28 minutes, not a good cap performance. But again, he'll turn that around. I'm not super concerned about it. Um, Yeah, I mean, really clean, really... Uh, not clean. Clean is not the right word. I would say complete performance from the Wolves. Given the shortcomings they have or the issues they had in this game, um, the bottom line is they found a way to win, and it's because the defense was so impressive. We'll talk more about that on Wednesday show. I'll, I'll, you know, we'll talk about the aspects of the defense that are most impressive to this point, but holding the league's number one offense in terms of efficiency to 38% shooting, 39% shooting, and 28% outside the arc matters a great deal. Also on Wednesday show, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to preview the Wolves game. Uh, they play host to the New Orleans Pelicans on Wednesday night in the final game of the four game homestand. The Pelicans coming into play on Wednesday are four and three and have played really well this season. So it's a fun matchup. We'll break that down. But your Minnesota Timberwolves are now four and zero at home. In the last week, they've beaten the Denver Nuggets previously unbeaten and the Boston Celtics previously unbeaten. In this, the three games of this homestand so far, all three teams they've faced, they've held under 40% shooting from the field. It's just been a really impressive start to the season for the Timberwolves. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the upcoming schedule. We're going to talk about the matchup against the Pelicans on Wednesday. All that on Wednesday's show. That's all we have for you today, though. A big thank you for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen each and every day. Of course, you can find this show wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also watch on YouTube and on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. You can also follow on X at Lockdown T Wolves and at B Beacon. If you missed the live postcast with uh, Luke Inman over at Lockdown Sports Minnesota, he did that right after the game with Jack Borman of Canis Hoopus. You can find that episode the uh, episode before this one in the audio feed. If you're on YouTube, you can go over to Lockdown Sports Minnesota to check that out. So be sure to do that. After each and every game, we go live on Lockdown Sports Minnesota YouTube to talk about uh, about the game. Um, it's usually Luke and then either Jack or um, Tyler Metcalf from Kana Super. So go check that out. Of course, this is Lockdown Wolves is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.